Here are a few of the most interesting things you'll only see in Asia. Number 9. The Pretend Job It's not uncommon for Chinese companies to hire foreigners, especially white Westerners, to represent them in public relations type roles. Many Chinese equate Caucasian faces with business success and a global outlook. For decades, products made in China but associated with foreign elements such as a Western sounding name or being endorsed by a Caucasian model are seen as superior. That perception has made China a lucrative place for some foreigners to pick up work on the basis of their appearance, regardless of their actual skills. Companies hire foreigners to step into a lot of different roles, anything from being a fake high-level executive to even being a fake musician for their marketing activities. It's all done as a way to win over more Chinese customers by appearing much more international than they really are. Some girls are hired as fake beauty queens to represent companies where they're dressed in sashes, crowns, and heels and instructed to be on their best behavior. The business of renting a foreigner has been going on for well over a decade, and even as foreigners become more commonplace, the practice still goes on. There can be a misconception that foreigners are rich, skilled, or educated, but that's not always the case because the more educated the customer, the easier it is to tell who's real and who's fake. Would you guys be willing to do a pretend job if it paid well? Let us know in the comments section and do us a quick favor by hitting that like button. Number 8. Sleeping on the sidewalk On the train to and from work, sitting down, standing up, at school, to school people in Japan sleep whenever and wherever they can. It's a part of the scenery day at night in Tokyo, another city that never sleeps. Well, naps don't count. Japanese people typically get very exhausted from long work weeks so they get it in where and when they can. And um, add to the fact that Japan is extremely safe, that's why you'll find people sleeping everywhere regardless of their location. In most countries, sleeping on the job isn't just frowned upon, but it may get you fired. But in Japan, napping in the office is common and culturally accepted. In fact, it's often seen as a subtle sign of diligence because if someone's falling asleep at work, they must be working themselves to exhaustion. Trains are an incredibly popular napping destination. It's quite common to see people napping on trains even though they may be overcrowded. The vibrations of the train seem to make people sleepier and if they have a long way home ahead of them, they'll just nap for a while. Number 7. Scooters in Taiwan So many scooters! If you like motorized bikes, then Taipei is the place for you. Well, unless you also like adventure, that is, because riding a scooter among a sea of scooters definitely qualifies as one. With the world's highest density of scooters reaching 970 per square mile, Taiwanese cities and countryside are filled with scooters. Since Taiwan is the land of scooters, it's only natural for this country to have more scooters per capita than anywhere else in the world. Sometimes you can even see a whole family on a scooter including the dog. Even though public transportation in Taipei is fast and efficient with excellent subway and bus systems, many people still have a scooter to get around their neighborhoods. Scooters are very popular in Taiwan for a few reasons. First, they're very affordable to buy, as the cheapest new scooters can cost around 1,500 US dollars, and a used scooter can be as cheap as a few hundred bucks. Second, scooter repairs are very cheap as well, with most problems being fixed for less than 100 bucks. Third, there are scooter repair shops all over the place, so getting something fixed is usually fast and easy. And the final and most obvious reason? Scooters are the best way to get around the heavy traffic in the streets of Taiwan. Number 6. Feng Shui For those of you who are not familiar with the Chinese term, Feng Shui is the art of spatial arrangement and orientation of furniture and buildings in relation to the flow of energy. There are favorable or unfavorable effects taken into account when designing the shape and location of buildings in China and Hong Kong. In literal translation, feng means wind and shui means water. In Chinese culture, wind and water are associated with good health and feng shui is done to attract good luck. Architectural feng shui is the soul of China's ancient architectural theories. Proper positioning and flow paths are considered critical components of good urban feng shui. However, the practice of feng shui is still seen by many on mainland China as needlessly superstitious. However, feng shui persisted in Hong Kong. Architects, even famous ones, ignored feng shui at their own peril. One example is the sharp-edged Bank of China Tower, 
which was designed by I. M. Pei. Concerned, Feng Shui experts saw the angular shape as cutting the good fortune of adjacent buildings. The Bank of China Tower's poor Feng Shui has since been blamed for incidents such as the financial collapse of the original owner of the nearby Lippo Center, as well as the fatal heart attack of Edward Yude, the only governor of Hong Kong to have passed while in office. Number 5. Blue Traffic Lights It's a lesson most of us learned years before we're old enough to be behind the steering wheel. Red means stop, green means go. However, if you've ever spent a decent amount of time in Japan, you might have noticed something weird about the traffic lights. The signal for go is technically called blue, not green. Since the international treaty that standardized traffic signals went into effect, every country uses the same colors for traffic lights. Japan, however, is sort of an exception. The reason why they ended up with blue instead of green light is quite interesting. It all has to do with the language. Let's be clear about one thing. Although some traffic lights in Japan may in fact look like they could be blue, all of them are still clearly within the physical spectrum defined as green. No exceptions are granted in the international treaty. So how'd this happen? Many years ago, the Japanese language didn't have a word for green. If you wanted to describe something that was green in color, you had to use the word for blue. That worked pretty well until the word green was added to the language. Up until that time, traffic lights in Japan were green. However, Japan's official documents were still describing the go signals as blue rather than green. When the international treaty went into effect, Japanese bureaucrats and linguists objected to the country's decision to still use the word for blue when describing something green, and the government listened and mandated through a cabinet order that traffic lights use the bluest shade of green possible, still technically green, but noticeably blue enough to justifiably continue using the blue nomenclature. So which is why you can say that Japan uses blue traffic lights, but not really. Number four, traffic ladies. North Korea is infamous for many things, but one of the more pleasant of Pyongyang's signature attractions is the ubiquitous traffic ladies. Working alongside stoplights that may or may not be working, major city intersections feature one of these ladies executing stiff military moves as they guide traffic in all directions. Officially, they're considered police, and photographs of police or any other persons of paramilitary designation are strictly prohibited. Of course, that doesn't stop illegal pics from being taken. North Korea is proud of their traffic ladies and the beauty and grace they're known for. So oftentimes, tour guides will look the other way when tourists break out their cameras. Uniforms are changed with the seasons. In the colder months of the year, a dark blue is worn, while white is worn in the hotter months. The ladies will also often stand under umbrellas for extra protection from the summer sun. As it turns out, these ladies can only do the job while they're still single, and they can't be too old either. As soon as one of them turns 26, she'll be required to resign. All recruits are selected based on their appearance and physique. I wonder what these ladies get paid. Number 3. Professional Train Pushers The Japanese rail network is known throughout the world for its superiority and punctuality. In fact, Japanese people are known for their punctuality in general. In the greater Tokyo area, nearly 40 million passengers use the rail system every day, heavily outweighing other modes of transport such as buses and private cars. The Tokyo subway network is a transportation marvel. On most lines, trains come every five minutes on average, and during peak times, they tend to run every two to three minutes. Despite so many trains, the subway is still extremely overcrowded, especially during rush hour. So, in order to fit all the passengers into a subway train, the stations employ uniform staff known as Oshia, or Pusher, whose goal is to cram as many people as possible into trains. The white glove wearing personnel actually push people into the train, so the doors can be shut. When pushers first brought in at Tokyo's Shinjuku station, they were called passenger arrangement staff and were largely made up of students working part-time. Nowadays, there are no dedicated pushers. The station staff and part-time workers fill these roles during rush hours. Pushers became out of fashion with the introduction of automatic door controls and automatic turnstiles. Number two, face masks. If you have the chance to visit a Chinese beach, you'll notice one very clear thing. Chinese people will go to great lengths to protect their skin. And this includes their face. You'll see plenty of people in masks in order to shield themselves from the sun. In some Asian countries, not only do women fear wrinkles caused by ultraviolet rays, 
but they also want to be as pale as possible as being tan isn't considered attractive. The face mask is particularly popular among Chinese women because in China, the color of your skin represents socioeconomic status. Whiter skin is considered to represent wealth and beauty. Skin whitening creams are popular in Japan, South Korea, and Thailand as well. The masks may seem a little alarming at first, but the popular swimwear accessories offers full face protection from the sun. I mean, staying out of the sun is necessary if you're trying to look as young as possible. The face kini was invented by former accountant Zhang Shifen in the early 2000s, and they come in a wide range of different styles and patterns. What do you guys think? Would you wear one to look younger? Number one, split pants. There's something about Chinese babies that makes them stand apart from the rest of the world. While most of the modern world keeps their babies safe from their mess and diapers, Chinese parents prefer an alternate approach. K Dang Ku are essentially split crotch pants worn by young kids that gives them easy access to perform their basic physiological needs. It's not unusual to see these kids on the side of the road or even in a building, doing their business, even with public bathrooms around. For many people from China, this is quite normal. For many foreigners, it's difficult to understand this phenomenon. Many see it as an antisocial, unhygienic habit that ends up hurting the kids. Even after the introduction of disposable diapers and access to many more public bathrooms over the years, split pants are still popular throughout China. Here's what's next. Impact that Nazi symbols still have 70 years after the fall of the Third Reich, or they just gave zero f but they thought it would be cute to throw a Nazi costume party. These kids went all out. They got full costumes, and someone even made a cardboard tank. Photos surfaced of the youngsters doing the Nazi salute.